I'm Sheila James Kuehl. Welcome to another episode of Get Used to It, our talk show concerning lesbian and gay issues. This is our Holiday 94 show, so welcome. Happy holidays to you. And of course, one of the things that we're most concerned about during the holidays, just as Americans and as people, are being with our families. Uh, often, lesbian gay families are not recognized as such, or sometimes we feel cut off from our families, or we're worried that we will be. You know what I mean. The holidays raise a lot of those issues for us. So we thought for our holiday show, we'd like you to be able to see and listen to, and me to talk with, uh, two of our families. Um, first, I want you to meet Tom Soto and his mom, Nell Soto. Uh, they were at my house not long ago, and listen in on our discussion. Show, not a silence show, okay. so obviously we're going to do it. Um, welcome to my living room. It's not uh, the room of the uh, rich and famous, but I have two famous, not very rich, but certainly famous uh, people visiting with me here for the first part of our show. Uh, our show, which we've called Generations. Um, we have a, a son and a mother. The son, Tom Soto, who is uh, on the board of the Coalition for Clean Air here in Santa Monica, was president of that board, an environmental activist, longtime environmental activist, mm -hmm. and also uh, a member of the board of the uh, Gay and Lesbian Community Services Center of Los Angeles. And his famous mom, Nell Soto, who is a uh, city council member in the city of Pomona and also a member of the Board of Governors of the Air Quality Management District, that infamous AQMD. Um, so I see your name in the paper every so often. <laughs> Actually, both of you. Uh, welcome. Very glad to have you here today. Thank you. For our, uh, this is our holiday show. And, and uh, what we want to do uh, on this show is really talk to you about the, the relationship, really, the sort of family aspect of uh, your lives together. Um, you know, often when gay or lesbian children um, discover their own sexuality, the very first thing that occurs to them is, how am I going to tell my parents? Because sometimes it feels like such a high risk for us. Um, so, Tom, let me ask you first. When you sort of discovered that uh, in, in that you were gay or thought you might be. Mm -hmm. uh, did you tell your folks? Oh no, I mean I, I think that uh, I probably became uh, aware of that fact um, you know so early on in life that it was it was always uh, uh, what I was or, or, or who I am and was um, you know largely um, uh, contained until I got into college um, and uh, and not really uh, uh, a major priority to address with, with, with uh, uh, anybody without those folks that I had um, uh, gone to college with who knew then. Um, and certainly the, the, the political environment uh, throughout my college career was you know, certainly during the Bush and Reagan administration. I mean, you could... Uh, not, not a great time to come not out, Not a great huh? time to come out, <laughs> not a great time to get student loans and so forth if... if uh, Mm -hmm. You know things like that were uh, discovered, so it was it was not necessarily the the most healthy uh, thing to do at that point. But um, you know, I th I think that uh, as you'll find that a lot of my life is tied to what goes on politically around um, uh, my life as well, because it's so much um, one to me. Mm -hmm. So you mean the, the sort of the integration of political work, and well, it must be growing up in a essentially in a political family, really. Um, so, did I hear you say you ever came out to your folks? <laughs> Never formally. I mean, I, I would, I would um, it, you know, I have a, uh, I have a philosophical um, position about, uh, you know, th that, you know, coming out to people. Um, I, uh, I, I much rather um, enjoy my life rather than preoccupy, preoccupy myself with uh, uh, potential emotional catastrophes or emotional benefits and I think that uh, in, in, at least in my life uh, given the strengths that I have in other areas um, you know those are those are the areas that I tend to uh, concentrate on right. and I've always I've always felt that um, uh, you know it's 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 uh, it, it, rather than than get over it you know what's to discuss you know so really you sort of let you, you operate and this is not an unusual thing in our community operate on the assumption 
that a lot of people know that this is your life they meet your partner when you have had one mm -hmm. um, you're on the board of the center so clearly you know you go to events you Certainly, see I mean, people I, I've, I've never been ashamed of it uh, right. because I've, I've, I've always uh, subscribed to the theory that uh, uh, you know if if if, um, if if I deny myself I didn't deny much more right and if, if you know it's it's uh, it's 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 part of a very ironically enough very staunch Catholic belief that I was raised in mm -hmm. that uh, not uh, to deny who you are yeah you, you know if you deny yourself you're denying Christ and mm -hmm. uh, certainly uh, that has played a big part in my life because uh, we were raised very devout and pra practicing Catholics and uh, and I think for the most part regardless of what the Vatican may say I think that there's some element of revolutionary thought within the Catholic Church that uh, I tend to incorporate into my life the the um, well it's true the, there's always this sort of dichotomy about activists the activist approaches of the church and the very sort of conservative approaches yeah. well but now I'll assume since you're here we're, and we're talking about it that um, you certainly know that Tom is gay uh, when did you first or do you, do you do you when did it first start to sort of occur to you or do you think you knew well I don't know, you, you think about it, but I imagine being the mother, you just sort of don't want to deal with it for a while. And then uh, comes the moment of acceptance, and then you, the thought that um, that shouldn't matter in the other things that you do in life that are so important. Um, and I think that your your sexual preference is a very private situation. That that's how I feel. I'm very old fashioned about that. Mm -hmm. And if that's his sexual preference, then that's his business. But and, we, uh, I I feel as if uh, he has been. I think people should have a son like my like my Tom. Uh, I feel very fortunate that I'm his mother. Did it trouble you at all, though? I mean, oh, somewhat, well, somewhat. But I, because I just, I like to see my children's childrens. Sure. But if that's not going to happen, then I, I accept it. You know, uh, I have a lot of grandchildren already. You have six children altogether. I'd huh? like to see my daughter's children, and I'd like to see Tom's. Ch I'd like, to, you know, I have a son that's 38 years old and has any children, and I. Uh, you always want to see your children's children, but that that's something I've come to accept. And Were you worried that Tom might be discriminated against or, you know, I mean, one of the reasons I ask is because I think my parents love me a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that bothered them was not that they were upset with me personally, but that they were worried that the world was going to treat me oh, badly yes. and I would somehow Absolutely. not succeed or something. Absolutely. You worry about that. You worry about their health worry about what, what would happen if, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you pray on it, pray mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that probably was, has uh, sustained me more than anything is my faith and the fact that uh, no matter what, I think that uh, my prayers will always uh, keep him safe. Well, That's will you pray for me too then? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. I like that power. Well, you're both. You both come from a very um, political, activist, um, caring about the community and the world kind of tradition. Uh, and I, um, I'm interested because Tom, you're very active. I mean, it's interesting to me being on the center board, but also so active in the, uh, you know, in the environmental concerns, etc. Mm -hmm. um, have you found that uh, as you become more out, sort of out in the world, people are more aware of your sexuality, or is it a thing that doesn't arise in the environmental movement or wherever at all? Oh, I think it, it certainly it, it, it certainly um, uh, is is uh, uh, becoming more obvious to a lot of people. But um, uh, that is, uh, and it's a, it's a concern of mine to some degree. But I, you know, I, I'm I, you know, quite frankly, I'm, I am so busy 
uh, doing other things. I have my own business that I run, which has 15 people working in it. Uh, we'll sit on the Coalition for Clean Air board, several other environmental organization boards, and the center board. Um, and uh, uh, you know, my my position is that um, uh, you know that's the way I am. I also came out here with two arms and two legs too. Um, how do you feel about that? Well, get over it. Um, you know, I, I've got <laughs> that's some, way you know, love I've, life. <laughs> I've got something to do here, and uh, either you know work with me or get out of the way. So. I, I, you know, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't necessarily affect the way that I feel about myself or, and I'm not really concerned necessarily about the way people feel about me. The larger question is a community, because you're talking about this community base, this community concern and so forth, is, um, you know, what can we do to, to uh, 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 bring our society to a higher, higher level of understanding of the need to address this issue, because it's not just, um, <coughs> it's not just uh, uh, the way, um, things are. Mm -hmm. It's the way things have been and the way things will continue to be. And uh, the larger question is, is uh, how I, as an activist, I as a political or a uh, business leader, can help to affect a change to improve the quality of life for this whole community of people that uh, uh, I am a member of and proudly so. But it would be different, wouldn't it, if your folks really were against you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's a big part of my underpinning, I think, that my, my parents always were very positive about me. And my mom's passed away now, but my dad, well, I mean, you know, my dad's picture was in every paper with me after the election. And it's a coming out for him, too, obviously, and which I don't think you necessarily have so much because you're not, you know, your picture's not in the paper as a gay activist, exactly. Still, though, it is a thing that gets around the family. How, how do your brothers and sisters feel about this, do you think? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I've never really discussed it with them. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because I've always had the perception that some know, some don't. And, um, but the other thing is that, that I, I'm, not, I'm not home a lot either. Um, and, um, you know, if I were to put off portions of my life until I could get home to sit down and explain um, or make that such a priority that I have to do that then other things that I feel as though I need to get done mm -hmm. including me payroll um, you know <laughs> which is very a mundane practical thing yeah. so no one's yeah. ever talked to you about this now about any of your friends or your family no, my or friends, your, my your family kids would, well at least in my very very close to my uh, older sons that are married and away from home. I never discussed it with him, but I do discuss it with my daughter and my other son. And my husband won't. I don't know whether he what, doesn't want to accept it or believe it, but he's not very interested in that conversation. Mm -hmm. Your husband. Mm -hmm. But um, we're, I, I think everything is overshadowed by the fact that so, we're so very, very proud of Tom. And his brothers, having as many brothers as he does, they're also proud of him, you know. Then, and they think that he has just set the world on fire for himself. That uh, and and doing so much good that all those other things I don't think matter to them. That uh, they um, love him and uh, and are proud of him. And whatever else he has in life, as long as he's not hurt or a. a criminal that's that's what counts the fact that he's a good person and that he's very 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 active and very popular and that he's managed to do some things at such a young age they just they're they're in awe of of his uh, achievements if you will and uh, and I think that's what counts to them I think the other doesn't matter that much they I'm sure don't think about it and if they do it's something that really doesn't matter to them because they're so overwhelmed with Tom's capability of the things that he's done. So is your family generally as, as activist as the two of you in terms of, um, so, you know, equal rights and uh, social justice issues? Because the, the reason I ask, I guess, is because more and more the lesbian gay movement is moving into what I would consider its rightful place as a, you know, in, a, in the civil rights panoply. And it is an issue in the world, not just a personal issue for our families. I think one of the reasons maybe you're on the center board, Tom, is because you, you see the connection. I mean, I, I'm sure of it. Yeah. 
-hmm. the connection in terms of a movement and participating in the movement. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, that, would, that would be something I think that would be important, in, it sounds to me, in your family as well. Yeah, I, I, I could, um, I mean, through, uh, I was born in 1963, so a good portion of the 60s, I, I, I can't remember that well, but I could definitely remember, you know, the discussions and the peace marches, anti-war um, um, activity that my mom was involved with when I was a kid. I mean, being carried on my dad's shoulder, um, you know, during the, uh, in the, the, the march for peace with the United Farm Workers. And uh, even to, you know, the, the most recent, uh, uh, more spiritual and, and, and uh, 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 personal experience that I had was being able to pallbear for Cesar Chavez mm -hmm. uh, with my father there. Uh, because he was the one in the state legislature that was, I mean, he was the only voice for the United Farm Workers in the 1960s. Um, to him, it was his passion, it was his life, it was his being. Um, and, and with that type of background and the type of leadership that was instilled in our family at the dinner table, it, it, it has really translated to me with the type of an agenda and passion that I have uh, for improving uh, the quality of life for my community as well and the environment. Um, you know, I, I ask myself, why should I be discriminated against because I'm gay? But I also ask myself, why are we still using diesel? Why are we still using this fuel that kills people? Um, and uh, why do we live in, live in a state which allows the discrimination of people based on sexual orientation? So, you know, those, those are the larger <laughs> questions that I, you know, I ask myself and, 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 uh, and, and, and have, have some ability uh, to change because I know I've done it in the environmental movement. I know that with respect to urban environmental quality of life, I have made an impact, and that was the biggest thing we learned in my household, is that one person can make a difference. Um, Margaret Mead Nel Soto. Um, and, uh, um, and I think that's the same type of difference um, I would like to make in the gay and lesbian community. And it is disturbing because a lot of people do not view uh, the gay and lesbian rights agenda as necessarily a legitimate civil rights issue. Mm -hmm. um, I want to know that before I leave this earth, one of the things that could be on my tombstone is the fact that I helped to change that. Um, so, you know, and I've had interesting experiences and discussions with people, members of our own state legislature who have been uh, largely supportive, who really don't, don't understand it, and I'd like to help make that change. Um, we were talking about the sort of the relationship between other movements and the gay lesbian movement, and just in terms of civil rights. Um, is that something that you uh, have, well, I, I feel as though you've been very supportive of Tom in a lot of ways. And I guess I wanted to ask you, Nell, and about how you think your husband, Phil, might respond as well. Oh, I think he's, he's such a nice guy. It won't matter to him. Nothing really, when it comes to his children. I think that you would have to know Phil to be no, what it, wonderful, exemplary father he is. Well, if Tom becomes more, let's say, more even prominent in the movement, it may be, uh, one of the things, as I said, my folks went through is that now everybody knows, and so it, it's almost as though the parents come out as well. Um, have you ever talked to Phil about the, sort of how you'll respond if this becomes more common knowledge? No, we really haven't discussed it, and I'll tell you why. That, to me, is such a small part of, of everything, mm -hmm. Th that there are so many things in this world that need to be done, mm -hmm. that need fixing, that, and that's one of the small things that needs to be fixed as to, as to uh, the acceptance, mm -hmm. along with everything else that needs some kind of, of um, conscientious help to make better. I mean, that's, that's just one of the things. There are so many. And if he chooses to do, to try to make that one thing better along with everything else he's trying to do, I don't think it's going to matter. And, uh, and it shouldn't. Well, I think that, it, that you, probably your pride and, and um, Phil's pride in Tom has been uh, a very important part of the, of the, of the confidence I'll that I know what, he feels. What, uh, the family is always anxious to know 
the last thing that <laughs> Tom has done. You know, his <laughs> brothers will say, "What's Tom doing now?" And uh, or what is that little gotten into now? You know, and what is he doing? And to them, it's important the things that he that he does, and the changes that he's effectuated in his short life. It's almost incredible. Some of the things, and they're all very, very social minded, and things that they, you know, they know what needs to be done. And um, being busy with their families, they haven't been able to be as active as they were. My number two son, during the Vietnam Vietnam fiasco had taken to writing poetry about the atrocities and the things that were going on and it was published. Mm -hmm. It was published in the local paper and he was in high school. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, uh, the marches that they accompanied me on, the things that uh, we were making signs, you know, fair housing and, uh, you know, you have to, uh, everybody has equal rights and it just was, it's, it's been an exciting life for them as well now that I look back to me it was a perfectly natural thing to be doing you know <laughs> and, and I don't know how I could have existed doing anything else you know the house didn't matter as much and the things that I material things didn't matter but it did matter for us to spend forty fifty dollars on a ticket for somebody that needed to get some help mm -hmm. uh, I have to laugh sometimes when Tom says the first memory he has of, of politics is that when evening he woke up and came into the kitchen and there was Jess Sunru and a bunch of other people eating his mother's burritos. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so that's the kind of memories that they have and uh, my philosophy with, in hoping that I could instill in them was that you're put in this world for something, you're just not put in this world just to be. You know, you have mm -hmm. to do something, leave something behind. Leave something behind that make will make things better. And I think they all feel that and they're very and that's why the activism, and I think that that's why they, they make sure they're interested in whoever's running, at least if they can help one little bit to, to continue the philosophy in which they've been brought up. They may not be able to be as active as Tom is politically, but they, they are still very, very aware of what is going on and the things. And I think that that's the satisfaction that I get and the pride that his brothers have in his sister and the family has in him is because of the things that he's done and what he's capable of doing and looking forward to many, many great things that he will do. So if you had advice to give to parents watching this show now who, I don't know if the word suspect is the correct one, but have come to the realization that their children might be gay or lesbian, what would you say to them? I would say that it, whatever else they're doing is um, I think it's what you have to come, it's, you accept that. You accept whatever else they do, just as he said, I've got two legs and two hands and you know, a head, and uh, I'm accepted for that, that's accepted, why isn't everything accepted? So I think that uh, I would tell those parents that uh, look at the good that's being done and look at, at the accomplishments and what goes on in their head about being able to do things for others. I think that's probably been my philosophy that I've, if I haven't done anything else with my children, I've instilled in them that you leave behind something that is beneficial to others that can make the world better, even if it's just a little drop in the ocean, it's still a little drop that somebody has put in there to, to be perhaps cultivated and groomed or seed that somebody else can cultivate and grow. And I sincerely believe that one person can make a difference and that's what God put me here for, to instill that into my children that I think every parent should realize that every human being has something to offer and that is such a small part of, of everything that you can do. Well, thank you both very much. Thank you. Uh, happy holidays. And, and I really, really appreciate you being on the show, and um, you're, you're both an inspiration. I'm going to go out and do extra work today <laughs> just because of you. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be right back with our second family. At first, we didn't know what to think. He said he was gay. We thought we had done something. I was so angry, so hurt. We didn't know where to turn. 
Talking to other families at Parents Flag was a lifesaver. Now we're closer than ever. She's the same daughter she always was. We love him just as much as always. Parents Flag helped us through it. You are not alone. For the helpline nearest you, call 202-638-4200. Hi, welcome back to Get Used to It. I'm Sheila James Kuehl, and we're right smack in the middle of our holiday 1994 show. Today we're talking with two families um, about their relationships and uh, sort of their histories and ups and downs. And our second family today, I'm happy to introduce to you, first, Johanna Grama, who is uh, co-founder of GLAD, Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, and who will be, <laughs> big job, the co-chair of the 1995 GLAD Media Awards. Welcome, Jahan. Thanks, Sheila. And her partner, Devorah Freed, who is a full-time artist. I wish you could see some of her art pieces. They're wonderful, and they, uh, they uh, hang in the home. And I've, I'm telling you, I'm going to bid on one of those. You better give me one. Okay. Um, and uh, this... Uh, uh, beautiful baby is Anjum, uh, actually their third child, uh, Jahan's first biological uh, child, and Devorah has two, well, I guess you'd still call them children, though they're now 19 and 22, right. but when Jahan and Devorah first got together, they were five and eight, so they've raised two children so far, and, and this is the third. And this is Frank Agrama, Jahan's father, who was a surgeon and is now um, Chair of Harmony Gold, which is a film production and distribution company uh, here in Los Angeles. Welcome, Frank, Thank Jahan, you. Devora. Really glad you're here today. Um, I think it's really good for our 50 million people, I'm kidding, in the audience <laughs> <laughs> to see uh, really our real lives and uh, to hear us, I think, tell our stories, which are always the most in interesting part of anybody's life. Um, Jahan, let me start with you. Um, probably the main issue that we have as lesbian gay people in our families that other kids don't have is that this is an issue of, of a thing to tell our parents and how difficult it is before it happens, how we tell them, how we're going to let them know, how they find out or whatever. Uh, what happened in your case? Well, it, it was actually uh, a difficult situation because, you know, I was confused also as to whether I was gay or not, and I had many male relationships, and also relationships before Dvorah. But actually, my parents asked me oh. uh, <laughs> if, if I was, and uh, it was rather funny because they asked me separately. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> oh. <Aww. Zoom. laughs> Bad timing. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, I don't know. This is what happens, huh? Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. It's hard to compete now it with is to somebody compete. else. You know, W.C. Field said, never work with babies it's or okay. animals. So, yeah, But um, I told them both separately, and uh, they asked me separately. And initially, we had a sort of little secret between us, and that was fine. And then when they both found out that the other knew as well, and then it, you know, uh, then it became more of a, a story. And it was very tough initially, very Who asked difficult. You first? I can't remember. Do you remember um, Frank? Well, of course, Frank may not know because they kept it a secret from each other, yeah. right? No, I think I asked first. I think so, but uh, <clears throat> I had forgotten completely because it's been, what, 13 years now? Yeah. I had forgotten how I reacted. And believe it or not, Jehan explained to me how I had reacted <laughs> and I got shocked. <laughs> Because I mean, I accept and I love them and, and uh, there's nothing. And I thought that I was always like this, but it seems that I wasn't. It seems that I said vile things. I said I will uh, disinherit you, mm -hmm. and and uh, yeah. will, you know won't want to see you again. It's uh, you know I'm shocked that uh, now, what that was I would it have that said. Made, what was it that made you suspect? And then finally, it must have been difficult for you to ask as well. Well, you know, I mean, she left uh, home and then just didn't come back for four or five days, uh. and I knew where she was. And then I called and and I had a feeling uh, that something like this might have happened or is happening and so on. But it seems that I really was very, very disturbed. And, uh, but we grow, so uh, 13 years ago is a little bit different now. It's true, and yeah. I, I, <coughs> what I find often with parents is that they, I mean, it's clear to me, I know both of you, and how much you love Jahan, and often parents feel it's a terrible thing for their children to do 
because they're going to be so unhappy. Do, do you remember? But that's, that's the, the only thing that I ask, and I even ask it up till now, of both my children. I have a third child now who's Dvor, and I ask her most probably this, are you happy? Are you happy? And I do not mean, are you happy because you're a lesbian, or are you happy because you're with Dvor? Are you happy? Are you happy? Are you uh, uh, fulfilled in what you're doing? Because I believe that in this life we live a certain amount of time and then uh, we go elsewhere. So we should try and uh, make the best of it and be happy. So this, to me, the most important thing. It doesn't really matter if she's, uh, you know, with a man, with a woman, with whatever. It's, are you happy? That's the, uh, the most important thing. Are Jan, you happy? Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and look. Jan, yeah. do you remember when your mother asked you how she, how she approached it? Yeah, I remember her asking me if uh, something was going on. And, and I remember grinning and saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember actually both of them saying, my mother saying, don't tell your father, and my father saying, don't tell your mother or it will kill them. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it is difficult because you know, I didn't know if I would be happy. I, I grew up with all the stereotypes and was socialized, you know, the same way. So what did I know? If I could make a life, if I could have a child, or how would I have a child? I've always wanted children. So it's, uh, it is an education. You must have been scared. I think I was too um, happy <laughs> at that time. <laughs> and, you know, just carried away with, with feeling in love to worry about it but yeah later on I, I really was scared and I didn't want to lose my family which is the most important thing to me or my lover which was the other most important thing to me so it was a real struggle uh, not to lose both and I know a lot of people have to choose and have made choices and I think that's the saddest thing that you can't when people cannot have both but um, we all struggled with this and made a commitment to it, to working it out. And I think that's what's important. Dvorah, do you remember the first time that you met Frank? Uh, well, actually, um, I met him the first time with my ex-husband because uh, we were invited for a business lunch because he <laughs> built an addition to their house. Huh. That's how we met the family. Huh. So you can say really that uh, I was the one who introduced it. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Can say we do. <laughs> <laughs> so they should thank me. <laughs> I bet know. they do. They do. do. <laughs> so, um, but talking about happy, I remember that we were intent on making everybody happy, and we realized that that's impossible. We didn't live together for over ten years. We had two residences because we thought the children would be my older children would be more happy if we would keep it a little more distant and make arrangements with them if they wanted to have children sleep over and would be maybe embarrassed then we would make previous arrangements and she would spend the night that night at her residence and so forth mm -hmm. and now i think we would do it completely different where so we would first of all make sure that we are happy and satisfied with the way we live our life and then have everybody else adjust to that we do that a lot, though, because we're so concerned that just our being in the world is going to be such an affront yes, to right. people that we, you know, but it's, I think it's partly because we think we'll be punished by our families, that your children, you know, wouldn't speak to you. I mean, you have an enormous investment in your right. children. Of course, the interesting thing is that parents, our parents, also have an enormous investment in us. Mm -hmm. when, when I told my parents I was 39 years old, and by that time, they had too much to lose to say, oops, sorry, you know, goodbye. But people do it. People do it all the time to their yeah. kids. They yeah. just cut them out of their lives. We it's were very lucky, you know. I've, I've yeah. uh, this, this thing that I just heard right now that Vora said, and uh, it, it really, it, it makes me very sad. And uh, I would like on behalf of whoever was, was involved, really apologize that it, we made it very tough for you, especially at the beginning, really. <laughs> Mm. We love you very much. Love you too. Now, have you been able to integrate sort of your lives? I mean, here we are in a holiday season, <laughs> and um, <laughs> I guess yeah. one. I mean, all families have problems. Like, whose family? You know, <laughs> where are we going to go for the holidays? Well, it's and too all this far stuff. to go to Austria, <laughs> so <laughs> we we go uh, to my parents' house, and sometimes we do it at our home. Let's say for Thanksgiving, and 
we do ha have a Hanukkah party at our house and Christmas back at my parents' house. So we cross back and forth. Yeah. Well, that's another interesting thing, of course, because you're also a, in another way, I guess, a cross-cultural. In this way, you know, a, in another way, a cross-cultural couple because of um, the being e Egyptian and. Yeah, Israeli I'm, or uh, no? Uh, I'm, Aust I'm Austrian, Austrian Jew, Jew, and I, I have to be honest with you. In the beginning, it was harder for me to tell my parents that she's Muslim <laughs> than that she's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny. Her parents are like, she's with an Arab. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did they respond when you told them each of those things? Well, thank God, during that period, um, Egypt and Israel made peace, and so there was a very good feeling about the whole thing and also she's so charming that they just <laughs> fell in love with her so I was really lucky about that and um, the woman part I think my father didn't really take it seriously because he thought that women together it's a really beautiful thing and it's a thing that will that will go it will come and go and he was kind of hoping that it was just a transitional period between my divorce and my next man hmm. And my mother is very accepting and loving, and she's very much like Frank in that she just wants to see me happy because she saw me very unhappy in the past. So, mm -hmm. so do you get to visit them? Oh, or? yeah. At least once a year, we either go there or they come here. What about the more extended family? I know that you probably have um, a number of uh, extended family members. Miserable. Miserable. Extended family is miserable. They're miserable <laughs> about this? Yeah, no, it's not that the whole situation is miserable. They don't know how to. Because, for instance, uh, something which I think is hilarious, uh, when uh, Jehan got the baby, this lovely Anjoum, in Egypt, they say that she had got married and then got divorced. Okay. Oh, that was the story yeah, they that's, had that's to that's tell. That's the story that they tell now. So oh, that they poor kids, the so baby, they can huh? explain the baby. You want me to hold her? Which is yeah. ridiculous, I think. So this is this is your family in Egypt. Yes. Uh, my wife's family. Uh huh. My family is in America. So my yes. wife's family is. Yes. Yeah. So, but you told them. Yes, I tell everyone. I mean, I I'm I'm proud of you know what uh, they're doing and what they're standing for. And uh, here, let me hold her a minute. Well, yes. Let's see if Anjun needs a break, or maybe not. Huh? Maybe she does. Maybe we'll take a little yeah, Anjum break. We'll be right back. It would be nice if latex condoms were automatic. <gasps> but since they're not, using them should be. Simply because a latex condom used consistently and correctly will prevent the spread of HIV. Hi, welcome back. Anjum is now in the booth directing the show, just so you'll know. Very comfortable, <laughs> and we're going to get a lot of very interesting camera angles out of this. Um, we were talking about the extended family and their response to knowing because one of the things that I think is uh, that people don't think about when they come out to their parents is that their parents then need to come out to everybody or have to think about whether to do it or not or who not to tell you know my mother said fine we love you still but we're not going to tell anybody in the family and then of course my picture with my father is on the front page of every you know paper in the country um, and wherever my father goes and people go oh you're the one with the gay daughter so it is necessary you know that they come out but um, who was the first person that you told, Frank, in your family? I think I told my wife first. That's good. That's, uh, <laughs> I think that was the start, you know. Uh, and what was her, what was your dialogue back about, uh, I like was, about I was this? mad at the beginning. I was uh, disturbed and mad. I think she even took it a little bit more uh, calmly than I did. Mm -hmm. And then she didn't change and I changed. Uh, and uh, this was thanks to uh, some friends that had visited us from uh, Italy, two friends of ours that are lesbian that we knew now for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. And they're very, very dear friends of ours, Italian uh, ladies. And uh, they talked to us and uh, we were suddenly confronted with stupidity, meaning what the hell are we 
doing what of course uh, we're stupid you know so I got out of the stupidity a little bit faster than my wife. <laughs> is that what you think too, Jan? Well, she's not here today. <laughs> yeah, so. That's true. That's so why we'll just, just go along with her. it. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I, I think that you sort of go in and out with this issue, as many people do. So you know, my dad was great for a period, and then my mother would you know have a relapse because you wonder you know I mean now I've had a a child and I want everything for her and, um, and I think that they had a lot of expectations about what my life would be and that's hard to adjust to but I remember one person that you told um, in the uh, Arab community was trying to match make for me and I think uh, she asked you uh, do you remember you told me this story she said uh, well there's this this very you know nice guy do you think your daughter would be interested in meeting him and to my dad said well not really because she's the co-president of the gay and lesbian alliance against defamation <laughs> so that was the way he I heard yeah. that he came out was about what I was doing with glad um, not that uh, or, or you told some other people I, yeah, think. I didn't give them a chance to ask really because suddenly at a certain age all your parents and all your relatives in the whole world wants uh, all your daughters to get married and of course uh, back home they used to get married uh, when they were 16 mm -hmm. and she was already 26 uh, coming on to 30 you know so they my god she's going to be an uh, old maid but uh, so you uh, you just have to uh, face things and you just tell them so uh, and but it's interesting what you said too about because you're becoming more sort of public as an activist I mean I think that's one of the things that happens to our families mm -hmm. is that it's it's okay you can keep it a secret from everybody until the day you're on Good Morning America you know talking about some issue in the community and everybody else around the world is going isn't that Frank's daughter um, right. so in fact her cousin in Egypt saw her on CNN in Cairo <laughs> yeah. so that's how she came out to her Yeah, I came exactly. out to my cousins um, and uh, uh, allowed them to tell their parents and it was hard also because it's my parents family so you know where where do I get to claim part of my family and say no it's mine too so I did it at the cousin level mm -hmm. and um, they told their parents um, who you know block it out don't fully understand it these are the ones who said that she got married and then got divorced and uh, yeah and now she's left with a baby and, and no husband left, uh, yes. yeah, baby and, and no husband and her friend or no they don't what? mention her friend no, actually they, they do yeah, yeah. <coughs> they I think always that that she's my friend and <coughs> that um, I think they even say that that we live together also but don't I, forget yeah. that Egyptians are very physical women hold hands in the street and kiss each other and touch each other they don't necessarily do have to be yes. right. right men do the same right. thing yes. so you know you can see uh, sometimes um, her mother and I will walk hand in hand in the street and people it has a totally different connotation or at least not mm -hmm. a not yes. as much a, it's not so sexualized as it is here yeah, we're very, no. much very, more we're very gender divided yeah. here and yes. any contact right. between you know women or men is so sexualized uh, right. yeah. here People I ran really into trouble them. here when I first moved to America because I had just come from living in Italy where people are also very physical and I had no idea but I, that I was being that different but um, you know just being a pal or arm in arm with a male friend or a female friend and I, I apparently was sending the wrong messages left and right so <laughs> <laughs> Literally, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and when we arrived, we used to walk uh, together, like two men, friends of mine would arrive, and we'd walk, uh, and we're talking about 20 years ago mm -hmm. on Sunset, and it was looked upon, uh, well, you take a look at Sadat, President Sadat, when he was talking to Carter, and he would put his hand on his knee <laughs> to make a point, and you'd feel <laughs> 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 President Carter moving a little bit away. This as good as he is about yeah, everything. You know. yeah. He wasn't That's ready for that. He wasn't for ready that. for that. No. <laughs> Well, um, and you were telling me about a ceremony that uh, that you had for Anjum. Will yes, when Anjum was it? born, we wanted to have a special ceremony for her um, birth, and uh, we found an Egyptian ceremony that is non-sectarian. Apparently, Jews, Muslims, and Christians alike celebrate that, and it's basically uh, on the seventh day of your life, you sent the angels that have been protecting you throughout your 
soul life, I suppose, and, you, and the pregnancy. And uh, you announce to the child that now uh, it's on its own and its mothers are going to take care of him or her. And um, it was a very beautiful ceremony with candles. Everybody held a candle walking around the house and singing songs. And it has a lot of rituals uh, with uh, one of them is shaking the baby in a little basket to shake out all the evil spirits. And so we just went through the whole thing. And Frank and Oli remembered from their youth this ceremony that they had forgotten. Uh, you know, let me mention something about this ceremony. You see, uh, Dvora and Jehan, it's this relationship that excites me. I don't think if uh, Jehan was married to a man or with somebody else, it's Dvora, she's the artist and so on, that they looked for this ceremony that we had forgotten about. I saw this ceremony only once in a village, like about 50 some years ago, before I was born. <laughs> just, just kidding. Yes, I understand. So uh, uh, it's wonderful, and they really studied it, and uh, it, it was it was very moving, very very moving, and everybody there was you know had tears in their eyes, and it's it's wonderful. So this this points also to the relationship, you know, when two are together, uh, two women, or two men, a man and a woman, and they're fighting all the time and so on. That's not a marriage. That's not friendship. That's not love. But if two people, it doesn't matter who they are, what they are, are together, and there is a harmony between them, that's, it, it makes other people uh, look and say, there must be something right here. And that's why we come back to the question, are you happy? Well, you said something like you that, know? or I think like that at the, uh, at the baby shower, because mm -hmm. there was a, a, a statement. Do you remember? What was said? Yeah, uh, my father was saying how happy he was to see how many friends we have because there are so many people and it was such a great feeling. Yeah. Um, Which is wonderful. You okay. know, a real sense of community. I, I think it's also interesting that the idea of family and doing this ritual, when I told my relatives in Egypt that, you know, I needed the, the special basket to be shipped over, uh, which they never found to send us, they were so surprised that we would do this ceremony. And it's, you know, we create our own sense of ritual and families, and, and I think that we have more leeway as uh, gays and lesbians because we don't just fit in, you know, we, we don't just take the traditional heterosexual route, so we sort of merge things. And um, the other thing that was pointed about the ceremony is that Dvorah made a speech about the, the baby's family. And in this case, it's such an extended family, <laughs> you know, in terms of her mothers, her father, and then... Her three grandmothers. Her three, three grandmothers. grandmothers. That was very lovely. You know. Now, well, tell, tell a little more. Who yeah, is this baby family? Yeah. Well, um, I basically said that she's a very lucky baby because she's a very big, f loving family. And I, uh, her biological father was there, and he has two brothers and his parents, and I named them all by name and my mother, and my father passed away, unfortunately, but my sister, her husband, and then the cousin's names. And uh, so as I prepared this speech, I realized there was like 50 names, was her closest family. I mean, I yeah. couldn't even expand because we didn't have that much time. And my brother <laughs> and her immediate cousins. Uh. Her brother, by the way, built the urn that, that you used to light the candles in. He made it all by himself from looking at a documentary that I showed him. Huh. And so everybody was very involved. All the women were dressed in the traditional Egyptian galabias, long dresses. and. Um, my older daughter and uh, her two best friends were throwing rose petals from the balcony. <laughs> it was really very special. That yeah. sounds wonderful. Yeah. And gay and straight alike. And all, all religions were there. So it was very special. Well, I've been at some of the gatherings that you've had. Actually, it was, uh, I was struck at several of the uh, events. Uh, that This community does have events, and especially with activists, they're fundraising events normally. But at, at your house, Frank, where we, I mean, we, I, I must have been there five or six times already for various GLAD events, or I think one of the Center Women's yes. events was there. You're always, uh -huh. uh, you're always welcome. Well, you're very more kind. And, more. <laughs> and does it, I, it must feel okay to you because we're there all it's the great. time, but I mean, to have your entire home and the, the, that wonderful front yeah. yard, I guess you would call it, just filled with lesbian I gay I don't know people. if you were there. A funny thing happened. Uh, uh, Jehan and Vora's 10th uh, uh, anniversary. Uh, 
Ah. And we had uh, some of uh, my wife's relatives from Cairo. And uh, there were speeches and they were, it was beautiful. Uh, I mean, with candles and the moon was there and so on. And uh, they said, what is this for? And I didn't want to start the whole thing. I said, it's their birthday, <laughs> period. <laughs> Everybody has the same birthday. You know, yeah, why not? You know, yeah. They didn't ask, you know. But well. they know that that family knows now. So. Yeah, it's guess. actually interesting because with the birth of our daughter, um, I guess that, that first two weeks adrenaline got me going. And I was on the phone telling just about anybody who would listen and <laughs> writing letters. And um, it, was, it was another coming out experience for me to have this child and, sure. and uh, introduce her to the world. You know, I talked to my sister and told her that uh, she's expecting a baby. And she told me something which was very funny. She said, I'm very happy now because the only thing that bothered me she's talking that she was a lesbian was that she was not going to be able to have a baby mm -hmm. now that she has combined having a baby she was very proud and to tell you i'm very very happy i know so it's, it's, each one has his own uh, well that's what way i, I of, think uh, i mean is that mostly you know. they seem to be worried that we won't be happy right what well, yeah. makes them they happy imagine a very right. narrow life they right. imagine a very un loved life or, or very discriminated against life and often yeah. of course it is right. but nobody imagines all the joys right. that we can you know. have as family and with each yes. other and and sometimes even more because we expect our parents to be so negative or at least we, we hope they won't be but it's a possibility when they're not it's, it's a greater a, joy almost yeah. it's like my parents you know yeah. are so wonderful yeah. we're very close to the end of the show but I wanted to ask you there are an awful lot of people who want to come out to their parents. And I want to ask you to, to give them some advice just for the close of the show. Um, should they come out? Will you talk to the, to the children and I want you to, to say what you would say to their parents. I would tell them to, to tell their parents that it's a very difficult thing to do, but it's easier to live with the fact of being out how, however difficult you might imagine it to be, it's not as difficult as remaining in the closet. It's that simple. So I, I would come out. I would also say uh, that they should be patient with their parents. In other words, they shouldn't close off and shut down right away when the parents are upset or angry because they have to go through the same stages that they themselves went through. And mm -hmm. it's really important to be patient takes a few years and just say they're happy they're happy that's all they're just happy so your advice is be happy and keep loving and them absolutely yeah well thank you all very very much thank you um, it's a wonderful show uh, that is our show and we wish you happy holidays and take care of each other <laughs>